Hello everyone and welcome to Great Uncle John's uh, video log, our special Mueller Report edition. Uh, today we're going to be doing pages 40 to 80. Uh, yesterday we spent about 15 hours in the car driving between Ottawa and Cape Breton Island and for hours we listened to the report in audiobook format. Uh, and when all is, was said and done, we covered about 40 pages, which uh, just took us to 80 pages, which was perfect. Uh, I must say this uh, is excellent car listening material. It's like a script for uh, a Net Netflix miniseries, which I'm sure it will be soon enough anyway. Um, the report is broken down into chapters focused on single characters and their involvement in the story. So you can visualize the episodes in your head uh, you know, when the secretary is drafting some kind of a memo and um, she's questioning whether or not it's legal, uh, you can you can see a whole episode based around that. Um, so pages 40 to 80 focus on the Russian hacking of the U.S. election. Um, we all know about the influence campaign and social media, but it was a bit of a revelation to me that uh, there was also hacking uh, of the local elections, local election officials um, had had their email accounts hacked into and voter lists were stolen. So this was an attempt to disrupt the actual election, not just uh, get some opposition research for the Trump campaign. This was a professional Russian spy agency operation, um, essentially a military operation. I would think the United States would should consider themselves having been militarily attacked. And uh, I know there were some kind of sanctions put in place by Obama um, after this. I, I, I forget exactly what happened with those, but it, it's um, it goes beyond just dirt on Hillary. You know, this this was a um, an attempt to disrupt the U.S. federal election and successful operation to do such. Um, the other side of the story is the dissemination of the hacked information through the Russian operated DC leaks and WikiLeaks. And as far as I can tell, Assange had some sort of personal grudge against Clinton and was um, that was motivating him to release harmful information. But there was also the coordination between the GRU, which is the Russian intelligence service and WikiLeaks, um, to damage the Clinton campaign. It looks like the Trump campaign welcomed all of this, and at the same time, Michael Cohen was working on a Trump Tower deal in Moscow, and various shifty characters like New York real estate developers and Russian oligarchs seemed to be trying to uh, set up contacts between Putin and Trump, or get their own little piece of the pie, uh, and the camp and get connected with the campaign, but. My takeaway is that the Trumps were too hapless to coordinate. Um, they couldn't couldn't develop a criminal case against them because they were just too chaotic. That um, they they never could seem to quite make that that connection. So so far, I'm not uh, I'm not sensing a grand conspiracy as much as uh, Russian intelligence exploring a weakness to cause divisions in American society and. Trump looking to uh, solidify business dealings with Russia and various players working their angles. Uh, and we just saw in an interview a couple of days ago that Trump sees nothing wrong with this sort of assistance from foreign governments, as long as it benefits him. Uh, I would assume he felt the same way in 2016. So the next chapter is George Papadopoulos, so stay tuned.